Happy New Year, everyone. Um, it's always exciting when you get back into conference play, and uh, uh, obviously the Big 12 is one of the greatest, one of the best leagues in the country, and we know that. And uh, the next two months are going to be a lot of fun for a lot of people, except for the coaches. But uh, we're excited to get going. Uh, we had a good break, and uh, looking forward to getting this thing started. Um, coming off the break, and 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 everything like that. Are you guys healthy? Everything, yeah. Everybody's good? Everybody's ready to go? Yeah, everyone's ready to go. Uh, we gave our kids a week off, brought them back, uh, worked out Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Yesterday was a day off, so uh, we practiced at noon today. So as of right now, yeah, everyone's available, and uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll hope that continues. But uh, so far, so good. With stuff going on in college basketball and, and in the pros, and, you know, COVID and all, and all that stuff, how, how concerned are you about getting through a season, getting through a day, getting through a practice? Yeah, I, I think we're very concerned. Um, you know, it seems like we've, we've I don't know, say if we're going to go backwards, but uh, there's a lot of things going on, and you see a lot of games being canceled and bowl games being canceled and that kind of stuff. So what we've the message to our players has been kind of uh, we've revisited what we talked about last year. Uh, control what we can, uh, celebrate every day that we get to practice or play, and, and we'll see what happens. Hopefully that's the case, but um, you know, there's a lot of pieces to this that are confusing to a lot of people, but uh, you, you feel bad for the players and, and, and who can't play, but you know, there's a lot of things we, we, we don't have control over, but hopefully we're doing our job. We did it last year, and uh, I thought our kids handled it great, and hopefully we'll do the same this year. Just one more thing. What's your percentage of vaccinations or, or whatever? Almost all of our, our people are vaccinated, not everyone. It, that includes everyone in our program. The yeah, the, the, the people that I get. Entourage. Yeah, our entourage, the people that get on the planes when we go places. Uh, uh, I, don't, I don't know what the percentage is off the top, but it's a very small number that are not vaccinated. Coach, this team's already, uh, I don't want to say accomplished a lot, like the season's over or anything like that, but – with down Danae and uh, without Nye and um, Maggie playing just a slim amount of minutes, what's it say that they could do that with the lack of depth? And how excited are you to get those pieces back as you go into conference play? No, you know, I think, you know, you play the games that are in front of you. And, and I think the non-conference portion of our schedule, uh, I thought our kids did everything they could. We lost one game to a team that's obviously proven to be really, really good. Uh, LSU won at Georgia last night. and. Uh, they've only lost one game. We won our games in the state, which is important to us. Uh, so I think overall we've we've done a lot of good things. Uh, obviously the level steps up, and, and it's every night now. Uh, there's not the the games that you kind of can get through. Uh, you know, it's like I told our players. It's uh, you know we we start out with four games in ten days, and, and our league is uh, is is as balanced as it's been in my time here. Uh, and so you, you embrace that mentality and how you prepare. The basketball season is nine months long. Most of it's over uh, for, for as far as the calendar goes. But two-thirds of the basketball season is over, but we still have two-thirds of our games left to play. And to me, this is, for them, that's the best time. Practices are shorter. It's all about playing games, but you're playing really good teams every single night. So uh, we're all probably in the same boat getting started. And, Hopefully we're ready to go. And then uh, how did Nye and Danae do uh, coming back into practice, getting back in the swing of things? Uh, Danae's not practicing yet. Um, you know, she's working out. She's going through all the rehab stuff, uh, all the boring stuff on the treadmill and in the pool. and All, all the stuff that you can do act actively that's not on the basketball court. Uh, Nye's fine. Nye, Nye's ready to go. Uh, Maggie's still uh, on a pitch count, uh, but, but she's – She's making progress. So, yeah, I mean, with the exception of Danae, I should have said that. But sorry, Randy. Uh, Danae has been out for so long, I for, <laughs> forgot about it. Um, but uh, everyone else is, is good to go. Bill, you mentioned right off the top that uh, this is a little stressful time for you. And uh, this may be obvious, but humor me. What, what are the biggest stressors uh, for you this time of year? Well, I, th I think the biggest – you know, stressor from a from a non basketball stuff is there's so many things that we can control. Uh, there's so many people making decisions, and there's no continuity of decision anywhere. 
um, everyone's kind of doing their own thing. And depends what news outlet you like to watch and depend on what league. And, and I think that's hard for players. Um, and my job as a coach, uh, just like when you're a parent, is explain things to them why things happen. And, and we're having a hard time with that. So our you know, everyone talks about living day to day and focus day to day, all those things that sound really good that none of us really do. We have to. Like, our focus has to be 12 to 1.30 today. We get to practice. So let's practice. And then tomorrow morning, do it again. Uh, it is frustrating. It's hard. Um, it's something I've never experienced in my lifetime, except for last year. But we all, not that we thought it was over, but I thought, I think most of us thought we would not be where we are today. And, and uh, you know, with things, again, being canceled and, all that kind of stuff, but uh, that's for the people way above me to make those decisions. So you're talking mostly on the COVID side. I didn't know if you meant any, you know, basketball stressors or anything like that. Obviously, uh, yeah, I mean, the basketball stressors are always, um, you know, you, are, is your team as prepared as they need to be to go into the Big 12? Uh, are we uh, at a point – because you're not, you're not going to get to practice a whole lot more. I mean – Basically, what your team is, barring any injury or funky, this is your team now. There's no more long practices, evaluation. So, yeah, you stress out about are we, do we have our plan in place that is going to sustain us over an 18-game Big 12 season? Again, in a year where in the past it was – Baylor was going to win the league, and you tried to figure that out, and there were maybe a couple teams that you thought you could beat. That stresses us out more because that, there isn't, that is not the case this year for the first time in a decade maybe in our league on the women's side. So, yeah, I, I think the biggest thing is do we have things lined up the way we need them lined up moving into the Big 12? <laughs> That's a great question. We're going to find out real quick. Uh, I, 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 I think we do. I, you know, I, I obviously like everyone else is, you know, whether it's injury or whatever. But, yeah, I, 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 like, the kind, I like the team we have. Now we're going to find out if we can play in this league or not. Going back to what you said just a few seconds ago, um, mm -hmm. talking about, you talked about the state of the basketball in the Big 12. What about nationally? I mean, with, with what Robin did, Robin's yeah. team did, you know, with Connecticut being, right. being an also ran now. Um, <laughs> Maybe I don't know, <laughs> um, but any, but anyway, um, yeah. What's is is everything wide open in women's college basketball? No, I, I think it is open? more. Again, Randy, that, that's a great point. I, I think it it is more than it than it used to be. I mean, I think the the growth of women's basketball has to be uh, new faces, new teams, and, and yeah, couldn't have been. I watched the end of Robin's game. Couldn't have been more proud of of her, uh, knowing our association with her and, and her being part of the Iowa State family, but. Uh, those are things that give everyone else hope, I think, and it brings some more attention. Uh, it's like Cincinnati being in the playoff. It's, it's, you know, it's some of the stuff that you see on the men's side. Who, who is that surprise team on the men's side that, that generates interest from the novice fan, uh, not the hardcore fan? Um, so I, I hope that's the case, and, and you know, because South Carolina obviously is a great team. So uh, I, I do think that, you know, I think right now there might be three undefeated women's teams in the country, maybe. Uh, and going into conference play, that number is, is eerily – that's a really small number. Uh, but it is a little bit more like the men's side has been over the last few years. 